Hey folks, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the quickest way that I can possibly show you on how to create a template with Conga Composer in a scenario where you want to have a primary record, the core record from which your template will be generated and to show the related records. So the most common use case here is usually an opportunity with opportunity line items. But the reality is you can do this with any standard Salesforce object or any custom Salesforce object. It really does not matter. So you could do it with quotes and quote line items. You could do it with cases and activities or cases and case contact roles. You could do it with accounts and contacts, accounts with contacts and opportunities. You can start to think creatively of the different scenarios where you might have some different templates within your business where you might need to have one core primary record in Salesforce that the document is based off of. And then you want to also show some related records. So here we are in a Google Doc, and I'm going to be following all of the steps that Conga Composer has for creating a Microsoft Word template, because in the end, all I really have to do in Google Doc is to go ahead and download it as a Microsoft Word format. That's all I really need to do. Nothing else is going to be different about it, at least not that I know of, or at least not that I know of for this scenario, I should say. Anyhow, so what we have over here is, I, so I've got this fake template and in the header over here on the top, what you're seeing is an image. This is not saved as text. You could absolutely save it as text. It really does not matter. I'm just to make things quick, I created a scenario where the header with the company name might even be in a custom font or you want the co company logo where the company name is along with the street and phone number and maybe website, etc. So I just created this as an image just to keep it super simple and to keep with whatever corporate branding you might want to simulate, which is a very realistic scenario. Everything else over here is text. Don't be intimidated. I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. I'll rewind a little bit and simulate. I'm going to, going to put in here product name and I'm going to put in here or a line item name. And here I'm going to put description and over here for price. Let's just put in some fictitious dollar amount. And over here for quantity, we'll just put in, let's say the number one and over here for total. So you're going to start off with a document that will look something like this and you're going to want to turn it into a template. So that's what we're going to do over here. So now on the left-hand side of my screen, I have Conga Composer here, and I am in the tab for Conga Quick Start, and I'm going to launch the wizard. And when you're presented with this screen, you go ahead and you put in whatever it is that you want. So what is the solution name? In other words, what are we calling, let's say a custom button or something for this particular document or set of documents. So you can have a bunch of templates that are grouped together in one solution where you can give it its own unique name. And here you have to choose the primary object on which this document, this template, whatever it is that you want is going to be based. So what I did over here was I created one called test. So I'm just going to jump into it and there's not a whole lot going on over here. So I'm calling the solution test because I want to make sure to delete this. And I'm basing it off of the opportunity. Again, you can use any standard or custom object that you have in your Salesforce. And here it asked me to find a simulated record. So I have a simulated opportunity for Betty White. And I just go here and I hit save. And over here for SQL queries, there are many times where you will want to do this. So for example, if you, let's say you have on the quote, you only want to show not all line items or on the opportunity or the document that you're generating, maybe you don't want to display all line items, but only line items over a certain dollar amount or only line items that have a particular attribute. Or let's say you're creating a document that's showing accounts with contacts. You only show, want to show those contacts maybe that don't have an email address or that have the word vice president in their job title. So you can generate any type of query to filter off of what of the related records that you want to pull into your template. Maybe you only want to have certain ones that get included in here. So that's where the SQL query comes in. In our use case, we're not doing any SQL queries. So we're just going to skip over this. So I'm going to go here to where it says add template. 
And then you might say, we're not ready to add the template. I know, relaxed. When we are ready to add the template, we will go ahead and we will click on this button over here where it says upload a new template. But in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to click here where it says create new template. And when we do this, what we're going to see is this screen is where we're going to get all of the field codes, the merge codes that we're going to actually put into our document. And you're going to see which ones are available to us. And this is where you might want to go back to build a SQL query to pull certain data points that are not natively available. So what I mean by that, for example, is let's say I wanted to pull in the first name and last name of the primary contact that we have in Salesforce on this particular opportunity. If I go over here and I look for primary contact, it's only going to give me their Salesforce record ID. I can't drill in to pull their first name and last name or job title. So what I would need to do is I would need to go back over here to the gather data chevron on the top, and I would need to build a SQL query to say for the opportunity that I'm on, go and look for, if you have any lookup fields, go and look for that particular lookup field of, let's say, primary contact and pull the following data points so that they are available to merge into this particular document. So I'm going to keep this use case very simple. I don't want to overwhelm you. So what I'm going to do is instead of putting in the first name and last name of the recipient, I'm just going to put in the company name. So when I search for account over here, you're going to see that I have both the account where it's a reference where I can click in, I can drill in to pull information from the account, the lookup account, or I can simply pull the account ID. I don't want to pull in the account ID into this quote. So I want to go into the account and here I want to pull the account name. So I can either use the search box over here or I can go over here and simply copy the company name. So I simply clicked on the clipboard and now all I have to do is paste it right there. And that's all I have to do. Now I can move on to the next data point. So the next data point is going to be the street address. So I'm going to click on street and I can see that I have billing street and shipping street. So it's showing me any data that exists for that sample record that I selected earlier on. So if I go over here and I simply paste it, and now I can move on to build out city state zip over here for the date. So that will likely be today. So now you might be wondering, okay, how on earth do I pull that piece of information? You can pull it in a lot of different ways. You could just put natively in Google doc or in word to pull a merge code that it should automatically pull in today. But you know what? Let's go ahead and see what Conga recommends for pulling in a value like today. So here you can see where Conga Composer has in their knowledge base information where you can see exactly what the merge code is for today. So it's system.today. I'm simply going to copy it from here and I'm going to go ahead and paste it. Now over here for due date, we might have on our record in Salesforce an actual date of when it's due, especially if you're using a quote. So in this scenario, what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate by putting in the close date. And when we go over here, we can see the close date is going to appear in that format. So let's go ahead and pull it for now. And I'm going to paste it in. And I might be a little bit concerned that the date is going to appear in this format and I don't want it to appear in that format. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what Conga recommends for modifying the formatting of this particular date. And over here, I can see the knowledge base article from Conga Composer that gives me all of the different date format options that are available to me. So I want the date to appear in this format. And as a matter of fact, I want both dates both the system date as well as the opportunity close date to appear in this format. So when I look carefully at the syntax that Conga recommends, we can see that this is the actual field that is being merged in. The two brackets at the beginning and the two brackets at the end, we're getting that anyway already in our document. So all we really need to do is add in this. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste it in each of these two fields. Now, by the way, you don't have to worry about the fact that right now it's looking 
really ugly, where it's wrapping to the next line, you don't have to worry about that. These merge codes that are within the curly brackets, it's going to be replaced by the actual value that will appear. Now, if the month happens to be really long, then it might wrap. So if I'm a little bit nervous about that, all I have to do is I can go ahead and I can just behind the scenes, this is a table, I can just adjust the columns of the table. By the way, if I wanted to have these two fields to be bold, all I have to do is I can go here and bold either the word before the merge code that gets put in, or I should say the merged value that gets put in. But alternatively, if I want the actual value to be bolded or maybe in a different color, all I have to do is go ahead and take the merge field itself and change the settings of it. So if I wanted it to be in a different color, if I wanted it to be italics, I can just go ahead and change it directly within the document. Now let's go ahead down here, and this is where you might be wondering, okay, that was all fine and dandy, but where do we go now? How, how do we pull this? Let's go back into Conca Composer. And now we're going to look at opportunity line items. So I'm going to search for line, and we can see over here we have opportunity line items, and it's giving us the little arrow where we can drill into each of these line items. So for each of the line items, I now need to pull the values that I need to show over here. So the first one is product name. So let's go ahead and find the product name, which is appearing down here. So all I have to do is go ahead and copy that. And then let's go into here. And again, I'm going to paste it. Let's decipher some of the gobbledygook that we have going on in here. So what we see is this. We have table start and then we have opportunity line items. And then so in other words, that's the object that is going to be pulled from to be inserted into this particular section of my document. And then we have the actual field that I need. And then we have over here where it says table end opportunity line items. Now I actually don't necessarily need this over here. This is going to get these fields are going to get repeated. These merge codes are going to get repeated in every single one of these fields that I put in. But I actually just need the table start to start at the beginning of each row and the table end command should go at the very end for each row so that this way each row in my template document is an individual record an individual opportunity line item so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to delete this over here and now i need the description meaning the product description so i'm going to go ahead and pull description and if it is blank it's just going to insert a blank value over here. So again, you can see that it's giving me the table start and table end. Conga Composer has no way of knowing how I'm using it within my document. That's why it's repeating it for me, but I actually don't need it. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. So I deleted the table start as well as the table end. I just need a table start to appear at the very beginning of the row. Now we need the price. So this is the price for each individual item. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to choose price. I'm going to simply choose either the list price or the sales price, depending on whichever one you need for your use case. So it doesn't really matter which one that I choose because this is just a simulation. And I'm going to go here and I'm just going to paste it. And you might have noticed that I got rid of the dollar sign. And don't worry about that. We're going to reconstruct that soon. I'm going to go in here now and I'm going to again remove the table start command and then I'm going to go here at the bottom and remove the table end command and then what I'm going to do is I am going to reference back in the Conga Composer knowledge base how do I format this field and this field to be currency values so let's go ahead and do that now and we can see in this article where Conca Composer is showing us all of the different options that we have to format number values in Word. And if I look down over here, I'm going to see that this use case is pretty much what we want. So we want to see the dollar sign here. If, the, if it's a positive value, it should show the actual dollar sign based on the currency. It should show the appropriate symbol. And it should also show it with two decimal places as described over here. So that's precisely what I want. Again, we have the formatting convention, which you need to understand, where we have the two brackets at the beginning, the two brackets at the end. We already have that over here in our template, so we don't have to worry about that. Opportunity amount, 
we're actually going to use that over here down below. But right now we're talking about opportunity line item list price. So all I need to do is I need to copy this parameter and I need to put it over here before the curly brackets. And that's all I need to do. Now let's go back over here for quantity and let's search for quantity and let's go ahead and copy it and paste it. And again, we need to get rid of the table start and table end commands. You need to be very careful and not do what I just did a moment ago, which is to accidentally delete one of the two critical curly brackets that are either at the very beginning or at the very end of your merge field. So there we go. We've got the quantity over here and now we need to put in the total. So the total price, I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And again, I need to get rid of the table start and the table end commands. So I'm going to do that. And now I need to go ahead and copy this currency parameter and pop it in over here. And now we need to have the total. So this is the total for the entire opportunity. So we need, now we need to back out of the opportunity line items because that value is not going to be there. And now I'm going to merge in the amount field. So I'm just going to copy it over here and I'm going to paste it over here. And now again, I need to bring in the parameter to display it as a currency. Now, by the way, something that you might want to think about is having this entire column be right justified. So just a little bit of aesthetics when working with your document. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to make it right justified. I might want to do the same thing over here, especially if there are multiple items, multiple products that are going to be included with the multiple prices. So we want the currency amount to appear all the way on the right hand side. And by the way, as I'm talking and showing you that, I'm realizing that I should not have deleted the table end command over here. That is a big no-no. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the total price just to make sure that I don't mess up anything on the parameters or introduce a typo or anything. And let's go here and let's bring in total price and I will copy it. And what I'm going to do is just put a line break and paste it. And all I really need right now is that. So I'm just going to select this, which is repetitive and let's bring it up over here. Let's make sure that there are no extra spaces. Boom. And I'm done. Okay. So now back to this row. So for this row, I could leave it alone. It will appear as a blank row. So this is not going to get populated, but what I am going to do just from an aesthetics perspective is I'm going to fill it in. So let's go over here, select this again. And let's go over here and let's fill this in. And you know what? Let's fill it in with the color that we have over here. And now let's get rid of these interior lines. The easiest way to do it is to just merge all of these cells. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click merge cells. And this way we have it looking like that. Best way to, for me to make it smaller is to just reduce the font. And okay, that's looking the way I want it. So now over here, terms and conditions. If you have a field that contains the terms and conditions in your opportunity, because if it's opportunity specific, then you can go ahead and just like we did earlier, you can go into your opportunity and you can find that field. So here, if I were to simulate to pull the description field, so you could do that. Chances are that your company will have standard terms and conditions. So all you need to do is copy and paste it where nothing needs to get merged in. It's going to be standard terms and conditions. So I could just leave it alone for now. You know what, let's let just to simulate that it should look realistic. I am going to add a whole bunch more text. So nothing is getting merged in here. So we're simulating as if these are the actual terms and conditions that we have. So if I look at the document, boom, we're done. We are ready to import this into Conga Composer. So now I'm gonna go here and I'm going to choose download and I'm going to download it as a Microsoft Word document. And now that we're back in Conga, all I have to do is hit done and I'm no longer in that screen. And now I can go ahead and I can upload my document. So I'm going to call this sample quote for video demo. And I can go ahead and put a description. I'm just going to skip it for now. And then I'm going to simply choose that particular document. And I go here and I 
select Add Template, and now my template is appearing. So I hit Save. Now what I could do is I can click over here where it says Assigned Behaviors, and this is where you have a lot of options. So one of the options that you have is where you can have the document get generated in the background, where most of the time that's probably what you want to do. So if I go here and I choose generated file, I can choose if I want it converted into a PDF. If I want to format what the name of the document should look like, I can go ahead and I can do that as well. For example, I can put in the maybe the opportunity name. So I'm going to search over here for opportunity name. I have this custom field called customized opportunity name. And you know what? I'll put in a prefix of quote four. And let's just do that. And I will hit save. Basically, I am baking into the automation associated with this template that it should automatically on the fly convert it into a PDF. I can also go ahead and choose here that it should do it in the background. And let's say I should also save it to Salesforce files. Now, the next thing that I want to set up with the automation here is to log an activity. So I want to create an activity that's called generated proposal for this opportunity. And if I also want to have, so this will be an activity that will be marked as having been done when the document was generated. If let's say I also want to have a follow-up activity, let's say three days later, I can do that as well. And that's it for now. I'm just going to leave it alone and let's go. I hit save over here, as you saw, and over here for the collection step. Basically, I'm just going to put it under opportunity management. You will see in a moment what that does. So I have some things already in this particular org. So I need to find my test template and I'm going to include it. I'll actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to put it on the top right now. I'm going to leave it on the bottom and I'll go ahead and hit save. And then I will click on the next Chevron over here, add button to the page layout. I don't want a dedicated button, meaning in the upper right hand side of my opportunity record. Instead, you're going to see what I just did a moment ago. It's going to appear on the page layout anyway, just not crammed in with all of the other action buttons that we have in Salesforce. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in as an end user and I'm going to simulate what this looks like and let's test it out. So I'm going to look for the Betty White opportunity that I was on earlier that I was playing around with. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to look for that particular template to generate. So when I go over here and I click on generate doc, so this is a lightning component that I simply added onto the page layout. And when I click on the sub tab for generate docs, I can go here and I can click test. That is the name that I gave it in the real world. I would not give it a name of test. So all I have to do is click on it and behind the scenes, Conquer Composer is now taking the template Microsoft Word document that I uploaded. It's taking all of the details for this particular opportunity where, by the way, here are the products that you can see associated to this opportunity. And it's going to turn it into that PDF. So now if I go here and I look at the files, we're going to see that the file is now there. Now, by the way, we're also going to see if I click over here under activities, we can see that two activities just got created. The activity that's marked as closed, showing that this proposal was just created and the follow up activity as well. Now, if I go over here and I look at the file, hang on, I don't know if I got everything right. So here we can see that looks like everything is correct, where we can see the name of the account, the address came in, the date. OK, that date did not come in. I don't know why I would need to troubleshoot that. But you can see that everything else came in. We have the products associated to this opportunity. None of those products have descriptions, which is why they don't have that second line appearing. We can see the price. We can see the quantity. And it's a shame I should have changed. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try it right now. I'm going to show you to modify the quantity just to confirm that the calculations are happening appropriately. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to edit products and let's change some of the quantities here. Let's make this four. And let's make this 20 and the numbers are going to go through the roof, but it's okay. It's a test document. It doesn't matter. So now I'm going to go back over here to generate docs and I'm going to simply click test one more time to generate that, that template, that quote. 
And you can see over here that it's processing. And in a moment, we're going to see that we have more activities that got created, by the way. And we can see the second template is here. And if I simply click on it, now we're going to see that the numbers are actually getting calculated appropriately and everything is automatically updated. So now all I have to do is download the PDF. By the way, I could have made it that Conga Composer did not automatically save it to files. I could have made it that it downloads it to my computer. Like, you could have changed a whole bunch of different things. But this is how I set it up for this particular use case, where now I can go ahead and I can download it. I can email it to someone. I can send it through DocuSign. I can send it through Conga Composer. By the way, one of the other things that I should have called out is that if you have, watch this, let me go back over here and I go back into assign behaviors. If I wanted to do some e-signature along with, in other words, automatically, when the once the document gets generated, it should automatically send it over to either DocuSign or CongaSign for a digital signature. I could have absolutely done that as well. And there are other options depending on which one you choose and it would simply pass it right over. If you also wanted, or I should say, if alternatively, you wanted to have a template email that should get generated and maybe a template email that should automatically get sent to a particular individual, maybe the primary contact on the opportunity, you can specify which email template and who it should go to, et cetera. So there's a lot of other things that you can do. I did not want to overwhelm you with this video. I'm trying to make it as quick as possible, but there are a lot of other options for you. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful to try and reduce some of the intimidation factor associated with Conga Composer and creating a template in Conga Composer to work with any standard or custom objects that you might have in Salesforce. If you've got any questions or if you need help with your own Conga Composer projects, feel free to reach out to me and I'm happy to help. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.